Good evening, State Line Baptist Church. Welcome to our Sunday evening broadcast. I uh, uh, hope you're having a great Resurrection Day. I um, uh, I know it's uh, uh, it's normally typically we don't have services on uh, on Easter ser- e- evening, but I'm I'm assuming everybody's home in their Easter pajamas with nothing to do, and uh, I just wanted to preach. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, just I miss y'all. I'm looking forward to getting back. And I'm looking forward to get back into church. Seeing your faces, shaking your hands. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a handshaker. Uh, I'm not a hugger. I'm a handshaker, and uh, I, I like shaking hands. And I like. I, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to that. I don't know if, if it'll be a while, brother Ralph. I'm, if, uh, I'm sure he's ready to get the handshake song started back up again. But uh, we'll do what we can do uh, until we did. But uh, I, uh, I had a a special. I, I was gonna do a singing special. I was going to get my granddaughter to sing uh, uh, Jesus Loves Me, but she got tired and uh, and then had a nap. And I hear her in the next room hollering, so so more than likely it ain't going to happen tonight. So, But uh, but that's okay. Uh, real quick, I just want to... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, if you would turn there. I won't be long tonight. I'll be maybe 30 minutes or so, I think. I'm pretty sure. Unless the Holy Spirit leads differently. Uh, but uh, I, um, uh, while you turn 1 Corinthians 15, my title, my sermon is if Christ be not raised. Um, I, uh, uh, before we get there, though, I want to, uh, I've got a prayer request. Sister Christine, talked to her today. She sounds good, doing good, and, uh, uh, but she asked for a special prayer request, and I told her, I told her, I said, let everybody know tonight. Uh, she needs to get an MRI done, and with all the craziness going on right now, uh, she, uh, she's ha- she having a difficult time getting there to get it done, the one specifically that she needs, and, uh, but she asked if we would pray for her, and uh, say absolutely before we get service started tonight we'll lift her up in prayer but uh good to hear a voice i I tell you i I was just uh talking to daylene online and uh uh, daylene uh put up about a church putting their their church family's pictures in the pews and uh and i tell you they're just i mean this is working we're getting it done but man i'm telling you i'm looking forward to seeing your face i'm looking forward to shaking your hand hearing your voice you get to hear my voice all the time uh this is why this is why i'd love to have you guys being involved uh you know record if you can sing send me a hymn send me a, 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 a your testimony and i'd love to play it because because everybody hears me every week i, I want them to hear you it's a church so so i challenge you uh, i challenge you three to five minute testimony how you got saved what your life was like before you met christ what happened the night you met Christ? What's your life been like since you met Christ? Uh, I'd love to play something like that before uh, before I preach, uh, especially on Wednesdays. I like to do testimonies on Wednesdays. Uh, I um, uh, not only that. I, I if you uh, you know if you got a song, you know, I'd love to be able to play that. Let me know. You know, make sure it's God honoring. You know, Bible based. You know, none of that rock and roll stuff. You know, <laughs> just record it, send it in to me, and uh, and we'll get it played. Uh, so anyway, I um, I preached this morning. At uh, Charlestown, and uh, I um, uh, typically we don't have services on on Easter Sunday evening. I used to say, you know, go home, spend time with your family, and whatnot. Um, but but of course, everybody's home, nobody's visiting family too much anyway right now. Um, so I was saying, okay, I want to do a sermon, and uh, Brother Jeff Farrow sent me a sermon, sent me a good one. I was going to play that night. I told <laughs> Jeff, forgive me. I was going to play his sermon. I he, he he preached one, and I said, I told you, I'm going to put you on on Sunday night. And, uh, and and then uh, and I had something else as well, so I had a few things I wanted to do. But I preached this this morning, and uh, if Christ be not raised, and uh, over there at Charlestown, and as I was preaching, I was like, man, I say like, I want our people to hear this, and I don't want to wait till uh, next Easter, you know, to preach it. So uh, so I said, like, you know, what? I'm going to preach this tonight. So so if you watch it at Charlestown, hey, you can get you know you can get take. Double notes. Uh, if you uh, if not, yeah, this will be the first time. Uh, you can shout amen and, and uh, enjoy it as we go along. Uh, but tonight, I want to if grab your Bibles. First uh, Corinthians fifteen. I won't be long. We're going to preach, close in prayer, and then we'll be done for the evening. And First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen, uh, and we're going to pick up in verse twelve, and we're going to get down to verse nineteen. Uh, and uh, while you're turning there, verse twelve down to verse nineteen, uh, I'm going to preach on six things. If Christ be not raised. Why the resurrection of Christ was so important. This is a doctrinal thing that helps us, I believe, as Christians to grow in our faith. All right? and, uh, and I think uh, not only that, uh, here's another challenge I got for you. I've noticed a lot of our church family is sharing the sermons on their Facebook page. 
especially we got all, we all have lost loved ones and lost friends that we just desperately want to see them get saved. And this is a great opportunity. You don't have to do anything but share, you know, and it sends that sermon over to uh, maybe a friend that may not be going to church. They may be scrolling through and, and they stop and listen. And uh, tonight would be one of those sermons because I'm going to really preach on on if you don't have Christ or the resurrection. So this is a good one to sh- like and share. But uh, but not only that, not just for somebody who may not be saved, I think this is a good sermon for, as a Christian, it's a faith builder. It, it builds our faith uh, in, in, our, in Jesus Christ and helps us with our walk. So let's read the text tonight, and, uh, and then we're going to pray and then jump right into the sermon. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12 says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? So Paul's getting on the church of Corinth. You know, There's some in there saying, well, there's no, re- no, no resurrection. Don't worry about that. All right? Uh, kind of a Sadducee doctrine. Verse 13, he said, But if, if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. That's a pretty big statement. So he's he's trying to nail down this that Christ is risen from the dead. Verse fifteen or fourteen says, and if Christ be not raised, then our then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Vain means hollow, worthless. All right. Uh, verse fifteen says, yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. So, so if the dead rise not, then Christ didn't raise. And if Christ didn't rise, then we're just preaching in vain, is what Paul's saying. Verse sixteen, he says, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, get this: your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. We're going to talk about that. That's a big statement. Uh, Verse 18 says, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Stop right there. Now go back to your Bible. Let's look at that again. It's a big statement. We're going to preach on this in just a little bit. Then they also, let's talk about our family, our friends that that have passed away. He said that that are saved. He says, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. means they're not in heaven. They're in hell. He says, if, get this, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. We're going to talk about that as well. But let's go to Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for this evening you've given us. Lord, I know we're not assembled, and I say that every time, and I miss our church. I, I can't wait to see them, Father. But I know, again, I know you're doing something. I know you got plans here, and we trust you, and we trust you. And Father, uh, I just want to start off now saying I want to lift up Sister Christine. Lord, I pray and ask that you'd have her, your hand upon her. Lord, I, I pray and ask you continue to heal her. It was so nice to hear her voice today, hear that she's doing good. Uh, but Father, she needs to get this MRI done. And then Lord, I, I lift up uh, the doctors and whoever does the scheduling. Lord, that you'd be able to get her in to get uh, that done so she can see what's going on there, Lord. Uh, Lord, I, I just pray and ask you have your hand around her. Lord, what a blessing she is to our church. Lord, I pray and ask that you would take the cancer away. Lord, that we would get good news when the MRI comes back. Lord, that you would just bless her. And Lord, I, I know you're not done with her, Lord. And I just pray and ask you continue to use that her in a mighty way. And now, Father, as we dig into to your word one last time for this Lord's Day. I pray and ask you feed us tonight, Lord. I pray and ask, Lord, that you would help our faith to grow. And I'm going to say a special prayer request, Lord, that as this gets shared around Facebook, Lord, if there's somebody watching right now that's not saved, Lord, I pray a special prayer request, Lord, that your, their heart would be convicted. And tonight, with a believing heart, they call on you and be saved. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I, um, if Christ be not raised, uh, Mark chapter 9 is... Uh, uh, this is the, the story of the transfiguration of Christ. And uh, he, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on the mountain to show them some miracles. Uh, a pretty amazing sight. Uh, when they got to the top of the mountains, a few things happened. The first thing that happened was Christ was transfigured right before him. Verse 3 says in Mark 9, it says, And, and his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can wipe them. And that no fuller means nothing could compare to the white raiment that Christ had. It was an amazing sight when Christ transfigured there for these few apostles. The second thing that happened was Moses and Elijah appeared to, uh, there with them. I mean, Moses and Elijah, man, I, can you imagine being there and all of a sudden seeing Moses and Elijah? Third thing that happened there, there was a dark cloud that overshadowed Moses and Elijah, uh, or, over cloud, uh, or overshadowed them, and Moses and Elijah had disappeared. And while that cloud was there, they heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Think about this. Or no, it says, Hear him is what it says. Uh, yeah, what a sight that must have been. 
What a sight to sit there and see that. And they were, uh, uh, you know, Peter, James, and John was just absolutely amazed. And after the transfiguration, the disciples started questioning about the resurrection. Listen to what they, they asked in uh, uh, verses 9 and 10. It says, And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. All right? Listen to what it says in verse 10. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. All right? What is this about Christ going to rise from the dead? What is the purpose? Why is he telling us this? And, and, and that's a good question. They were wondering about that, and so they were bouncing that question around. And why is the resurrection so important? Why is it so important that Jesus rose from the dead? I mean, that's what we're celebrating today. That's the big Easter Sunday, big resurrection death. Why is it so important? Uh, yeah, let me read you a couple of things. Uh, Jesus said the resurrection was a must. Matthew chapter uh, 16, verse 21 says, it says, From that time, uh, that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and, be ra and, and raised again the third day. He said it was a must. The resurrection was a must. It had to have happened. Uh, it, Jesus says it, it, that was something that was an absolute guarantee. Matter of fact, he says in Luke uh, 24, verse 46, he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. He said it behooved. Let me see. Well, let me look at definition of uh, behooved means uh, necessity brought on by circumstances. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. It was a must that Christ rose from the dead. Paul said something very similar. Acts chapter 17, verse 3 says, Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that, uh, that this Jesus whom I preached unto you is Christ. Paul even says it was a must that Jesus rose from the dead, all right? Why is that so important? Why is it a must that Jesus had to rise from the dead? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you six reasons. I dug through the scriptures pretty much out of our text. I'm gonna take a lot out there and a few from other places as well. If you're taking notes, just kind of keep up with me. So I got six reasons why the resurrection was a must. Number one, without the resurrection of Christ, we have no high priest. Without the resurrection of Christ, we have no high priest. Let me read you a verse. Hebrews 8.1 says, Now the things which we have spoken this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. We have a high priest. When you study the doctrine of the high priest, the high priest was the one that went into the holy place inside the tabernacle or the temple uh, on behalf of the people to sprinkle the blood onto the mercy seat and uh, make an atonement for, uh, for the people's sins. But Jesus is our high priest. He is the one that's going on to heaven uh, on our behalf, uh, uh, you know, uh, sitting for us. Let me read you the verse. Hebrews 4.14 says, Seeing then that we have a, a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We have Jesus Christ sitting in heaven for us. And I dug into the scriptures. I found two things I want to give you real quick. What he's doing while he's in heaven. Number one, he is making intercession for us. Romans 8.34 says, says, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, that, uh, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Making interse intercession means to go on behalf of another person. Jesus is our mediator that goes between simple man and a holy and righteous God. He is the one that, that, that conveys our prayers. It's, that's why we say in Jesus' name. Now think about this. Um, I'll use the illustration. When um, my granddaughter Jordan was born um, in the uh, in the hospital, that was only allowed uh, Nancy, Tanner, and Lauren. I wasn't allowed in there. I was they only allowed three, uh, and I had to wait out in the hallway. <laughs> and I can remember however long it took, a couple hours, whatever, just pacing up and down the hallways. And uh, every once in a while, a nurse would come out and just kind of fill me in on what was going on. Everything's fine. You know, she's hanging in there. Baby be born soon and whatnot. And, uh, but the nurse was keeping me informed of what exactly all was all going on in there. She was the mediator because I couldn't go in there. You know, heaven is a holy place. 
And, and we have to get rid of this sinful tabernacle before we as Christians go to heaven. But in the meantime, Jesus is our intercessor. He is the one making intercession between us and God. He's got, I need an intercessor. We need an intercessor. Uh, I, need, I need prayer. I need, I need to be praying for people. We need our prayers to go. I've got family that needs saved. I've got friends that need saved. I need an intercessor to go between us and God. And without the resurrection, Jesus could not ascend up into heaven to be the intercessor. Number two, he is our advocate. 1 John 2, 1 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Now get this, And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Advocate is a legal term, that one that pleads on behalf of another. Jesus is our lawyer, basically, standing on the right hand of God. And that's a good thing, because... We have an accuser. Revelation 12, verse 10 says the devil is our accuser that accuses the brethren. I mean, he's the one that when you mess up, he says, do you see that? Do you see what she did? Do you see what he did? Do you see, uh, uh, you, that's, you called him your child? Do you see what he did? And Jesus will stand up and say, yeah, I see what he did, but I remember what I done on the cross, and my blood covered that sin, paid in full, it is finished. We have an advocate, we have an intercessor standing on our behalf at the throne right now as we speak. If there be no resurrection, then Christ didn't rise from the dead, then we have no intercessor, we have no advocate standing alongside the Father. Number two, without the resurrection, we have no hope. Without the resurrection, we have no hope. 1 Corinthians 15, 7 in our text, or 17 says, uh, uh, If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet in your sins. Ye are yet in your sins. It, it, when Christ shed his blood on Calvary, when he died and his blood was shed, the sin debt was paid. It is finished is what he proclaimed before he died. The sin that was paid. But the resurrection was God acknowledging that he accepted the payment for sin. That's why we have hope. That's why we have hope, because the sin debt was paid, and it was accepted by, by Jesus Christ. Let me use a, a little illustration I used this morning. Uh, uh, imagine uh, me and Jeff Farrow going out to lunch. Jeff's a big spender. I don't know if you know that or not. He's always buying things, toys, you know. <laughs> and he said, he said, Pastor, I want to take you out to lunch. Don't worry about it. I'm a big spender. We're going to McDonald's. You can get a Big Mac, whatever you want. <laughs> so we go to, go to McDonald's, and, and as he goes up to the counter, they, they, he goes to pay for it, and he pulls out Monopoly money. The lady would look at him and say, well, you know, that's not, I'm not accepting that. That's fake money. <laughs> I can't take it. You know, it, it wouldn't be able to buy the food, you know, but, 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 it, but if he pulled out real money, you know, real money, it, it says, you know, here you go, here's 10, 20, 30, whatever, how much we want to eat. She would accept that payment and we would get the product. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the sin debt. And when God raised him from the dead, it, it was the proof that he accepted the payment. That's why we get excited when, when this time of year around Easter when we celebrate the resurrection because the resurrection was the evidence that not only was the sin debt paid, but God accepted the payment. No other religion can claim that. No other religion in this world can claim, first off, they don't have a Messiah that was sinless to die on a cross. They don't, no other religion not only not has a Messiah that took care of the sin problem, no other religion has a Savior that faced death and won. This was what separates Christianity from everything else. Every other religion out there is because Christianity deals with the sin issue. And, the, and not only that deals with the sin issue, it also deals with the death issue. And by the way, I like both of those, the, 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 those things being dealt with because I'm a sinner and one day I'm going to die. And Jesus is the only one that's taken care of both of those. He's took take sin out of the way of my life and he died for me so I will never see death. Praise God. Number three. Without the resurrection, we have no power over death. Acts chapter 2, verse 24 says, whom, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Oh, I love that. It is not possible that death could hold on to Jesus Christ. 
It was impossible. It was impossible for, for death to keep him down. And when he said, in three days, I will raise it up, he meant that, the, that, that I had full control over this. I have the keys to death. Death don't have a hold of me. Praise God. He said, matter of fact, with whom he raised up, having loosed the pains of death. That means he got control of it. Our Savior is the only one in this world that says, I got control of death. Death is something we, we fear because we know one day we are going to die physically. And we know that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6.14 says, And God have the both, have both raised up the Lord, uh, the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. The same power that raised Christ up out of the grave is the same power that we got once we get saved, and it's going to raise us up from the grave as well. Uh, you know, I um, this is why, <laughs> this is why I put my faith in Christ. Well, not the only reason why. There's many reasons why, but this is one of the strong ones. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not a gambler. I don't like betting. I never have. Even as a lost person, I just don't like losing even a quarter. I just don't like. I, I don't want to bet and lose. I just don't never gamble. I never have. I um, in my soul is worth a lot more than 25 cents. <laughs> My soul is very valuable, and it's going to spend an eternity somewhere. I, I, I was researching, according to Wiki Atheism, there is 28 million gods. I don't know what atheists they assign to count them all, but evidently that's what they say. 28 million gods. And on their atheist website, they say, what makes yours so special? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I like to answer that. Mine's so special because mine's the only one that dealt with sin and faced death and won. <laughs> By the way, your God, Darwin, he's still dead. He didn't raise from the dead. And that's what you're putting your eternity on. Not me. I'm staying away from uh, Muhammad, Buddha, any Eastern theology, I, the snake God. Whatever. I don't care what all these 28 million gods are. I know Jesus. I know he died on the cross. And I know he, he, death couldn't hold on to him. He raised from the dead. Without the resurrection, we have no power over death. The resurrection was proof that Jesus had control, not death. Number four, without the resurrection, we have no hope. Now get this, no hope of a heavenly family reunion. No hope of a heavenly family reunion. The Bible talks a lot about our family in heaven. Uh, the, the, those saved loved ones. Uh, what, I, there's a lot of passages I could pull out, but one I, I wrote down specifically is uh, you know the rapture passage, 1 Thessalonians 4. Listen to what it says in 13 and 14. It says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. This, he's talking to the, the church at Thessalonica. They were concerned about their family members that had passed away. They were saved, he said, because they, they were asleep. That's, that's the biblical uh, word used for saved Christians who had died. They were asleep. He said that ye sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. See, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you have no hope. That he's the only one uh, that's, as we've already said, that beat death. So you need Jesus Christ. He said, but the ones that have died in Christ, they have hope. Matter of fact, we have hope. Look what he says in verse 14. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, beat death, he said, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, the, the context there is talking about the rapture. That one day Christ is going to step out on a cloud and he's going to bring our loved ones, our family, those people we used to go to church with, that then people we used to serve with, all our friends, and he's going to come, and there's going to be a great reunion in the sky one day. See, he's going to bring them with them because right now Jesus is up in heaven and they're with him. <laughs> you can't bring them with them unless they're there. That, that, that blows soul sleep out of the water. You know, if their soul is asleep in the grave, how is he going to bring them with them? <laughs> He's bringing them down from heaven. They're there now. That's the hope. Matter of fact, he says in verse 18, he says, comfort one another with these words. That's the comfort that we got. You know, when you go to a funeral you, of, a, of a loved one that's saved, it brings you comfort knowing this is not goodbye. This is just I'll see you in a little while when I get done with what I got to do here on this earth. I, you know, I've done a lot of funerals in the 10, 11 years I've been pastoring. And, uh, and I tell you, they're, they're never easy. 
They're never either great opportunity to tell somebody God kind of breaks hearts at that time, but they're never easy. You'll always see the loved ones there. You'll always see those crying and hurting. You, you see that somebody was part of their lives, and now for the rest of their life, they're not going to be there in their life anymore. Uh, I, I, when my family passed away there just within just a couple of years, it, it was difficult. You know, as I preached on this morning, um, I, I remember going to each funeral thinking, how am I going to get through this? You know, How am I going get, to get through this? Uh, I remember uh, Granny Lockard, when when old man Locker passed away, yeah, I remember her holding on to his hand, not wanting to let go. I, I can remember uh, when we had that funeral for those those uh, those kids that was coming to our church. Three, what, four caskets in our in our church, little baby caskets, and and I'm looking at the family. But the one thing all of these people had in common was was they were all saved. They were uh, they were asleep in Christ. And, and my Bible says that because of the resurrection, he, Jesus beat death, and they're with him and alive right now. See, if there's no resurrection, if there's no resurrection, then there's no hope for our lost family. I mean, I'm sorry, our saved family that are passed away. There's no hope. We've got nothing to look forward to. But, but this is how you get through this. This is how you go on with what God has for you. It's because you know where they're at. That's the, that's the joy through tears at a funeral that you have. You know, but, uh, you know, it's, um, let me read you, let me read you uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 17 through 18. It says, If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, Ye are yet your sins, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. What he's saying here is in our text verse that if Christ didn't raise from the dead, then you're never going to see your family again. But praise God, he did raise from the dead. We don't have to worry about that no more. We know, we know where our family that is saved at. We know, I know, I know when I die that I, when I close my eyes, I'm going to see my Savior because he rose from the dead. I'm going to see Tracy. I'm going to see Mom. I'm going to see Dad. I'm going to see Pastor Wyatt. I'm going to just get down the list of all the people I, that I know are saved. And they're up there right now as we speak, just as alive as they ever been, more alive than what they were here on this earth. And praise God, seeing the things that, that, that they've never, that we've never seen, you know? and we're going to see him one day. Why? Because we got a Savior that beat death. I'm going to say, I've said this through the whole sermon. I'm going to keep saying it until we get to the end because this is a glorious sermon. It's a fun sermon to preach because Jesus beat death. And next time you go to a funeral of a loved one that you know saved, through tears you can smile because we serve a risen Savior. Number five, if there be no resurrection, then this life is is the best there is. Look down at 1 Corinthians 15. Look at verse 19. Listen to what Paul says. I love this. I like Paul's, I guess it's a, a, a sarcasm a little bit, I guess. Verse 19, he says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. <laughs> Joe Olstein wrote a book called Your Best Life Now. That's exactly the opposite of what Paul just said here in verse 19. He says, if Christ didn't raise, this is all we got, and this is, is most miserable. I mean, this life is, has some good times, but it is a sin-filled life. There is death. There is sickness. There is COVID-19 floating around out there somewhere. There is uncertainty about what five minutes from now holds. There is growing old. There is heartache. There is hurt. There is pain. There is disease because of the sin that's in this world. You know, even though, yeah, you may have some good times here on this earth, but this life is most miserable, what Paul says. But, but you know what? I, uh, heaven is not like that. <laughs> and we don't have to worry about that anymore because Jesus is not dead he rose from the dead, and he is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. And because he is alive, he beat death, and we don't have to worry about death. This life for us as Christians, it, we're just passing through. We don't put our stocks in this bank. We don't, we don't worry about necessarily this earth. We, we are concerned about heaven because this earth is just most miserable. But boy, when we get to heaven, man, we've got a mansion over the hilltop. We got, we've got streets of gold one day we're going to walk on. We've got, we've got uh, uh, gates of pearl. We've got family and friends waiting over there. We've got sights to see that we've never seen before. I have not seen nor ear have heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him we've got just uh, some amazing things to see we've not only that we've got a savior that one day 
when we draw our last breath and we close our eyes here and open our eyes up in eternity, we'll see our Savior. We'll see those nail-scarred hands. We'll see the nail-scarred feet and we'll fall down at His feet and worship Him. Why can I say that? Why can I say that with all confidence? Because He faced death and won. And then number six, if there be no resurrection, we might as well go home. And I'll close with this. 1 Corinthians 15, look at verses uh, 14 and 15. It says, And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching vain, and our, your faith is also vain. Yea, and we, are found, our, and, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he has raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so that the dead rise not. Vain means worthless, empty, having no value. What he's saying there is, if our Savior didn't raise from the dead, we're wasting our time as Christians. We might as well see what we can get out of the property there on 560 Chrome Road where the church is. Maybe turn the church into a store. Maybe we can make better money than that. No sense in reading your Bible anymore because if there's no resurrection, then there's no sense. There's nothing after this. Matter of fact, you might as well try to have your best life now because if there's no resurrection, this is all we got. And matter of fact, if there's no resurrection... I can just turn the camera off and go fishing right now and just wait and see and, ho and hope I can live as long as I possibly can. If there's no resurrection, our preaching is vain. As a matter of fact, this is the litmus test how you can find out what a false prophet is. Are they preaching a resurrected Christ? If there's a, another religion out there that's preaching anything but a resurrected Christ, that's, according to the Bible, a false religion. But you know what? Praise God we serve a risen Savior. Praise God that he did raise from the dead. Praise God that means preaching means something. Our preaching's not in vain. Our preaching is the power of the gospel. That means the church house is for something. That means that's the place where we meet and edify one another. Praise God that means your prayer is worth something. It's going up before the throne of God. Praise God that means your soul winning is worth something. That means that the service that you do for God is worth something. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. You see, guys, this is why we celebrate this day. Because so many things hinge on the fact that Jesus died on a cross and death could not hold him. He went to the grave, like he said, for three days, and then he rose up out of that grave. Now, I'm going to ask you tonight, are you saved? I, you know, if you come to State Line, you're going to hear this. Are you saved? Do you know beyond the shadow of a doubt if you die today, heaven be your home? You see, if you're putting your hopes in anything else, if you're putting your hopes in your good works, in your church membership, in your baptism, anything else other than the plain faith in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross, rose from the dead, if you're putting your hopes in anything else, you will die and split hell wide open for all eternity. But if you're, but if you're here tonight and you know I'm a sinner and you place your faith on Jesus Christ and ask him to save you, he promises you he'll save you. Christian, how's your faith? I, I tell you, you want a faith builder. You want to help your walk uh, grow with Christ. Look at the fact that we serve a risen Savior. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day you've given us. I thank you, Lord, that, that even though we're not assembled in the church house, Lord, we can still stay connected. Father, I pray for our church. I miss them terribly. Lord, I, I, I pray. There's so many uh, prayer requests needed. Uh, but I am going to pray, Lord, that you keep them safe through the, whatever's going on outside our doors. Father, I pray and ask you keep the COVID away from our church family. Keep them. I know we got some that are dealing with health issues. Lord, I pray and ask you keep them safe. Lord, I pray for our church as we go through this. Lord, that we still stay strong, Lord, that we, and Lord, build a hunger. I know I'm hungry to get back in the church house and see our, our, our church family, but Lord, just keep them safe, keep them protected. And Father, I ask one more time, if somebody's listening that's not saved, I pray and ask, Lord, that they would bow their head right now with a believing heart and call on you today and be saved. Father, keep us safe until we come together, and Lord, we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, and uh, if, you got, if you need to be saved, Hit the message button. Give me a call. Give me a shout. Uh, and, and stay line. I miss you. Give me, a call, give me a call. Let's talk and chat. Unless I'm studying. No, I'm joking. Give me a call anytime. I miss you guys, and I'll see you in a little while.